This is Red Raider Football with Mike Leach, presented by First United Bank. Hello there. Welcome into Red Raider Football with Mike Leach. My name's Drew Doherty. Texas Tech at home, taking on the University of Massachusetts. And on today's show, we'll do Ask Coach Leach. We'll get you caught up on all the action in the game between the Minutemen and the Red Raiders. Then we'll talk about it afterwards with the head coach himself. Plus, we'll take a look at Eric Morris. Stick with us. Red Raider Football with Mike Leach is coming back. Red Raider Football with Mike Leach is presented to you by First United Bank. Welcome back to Red Raider Football with Mike Leach. It's that time of the program where you ask Coach Leach. So simple, you go to texastech.com, you send in those questions for the coach, and he'll answer them just like he did earlier this week after a practice. Okay, Coach, from Roger in Dallas, he says, I heard you were an Eagle Scout. Is that true? And if so, what was your favorite thing to do when you went camping? Uh, yes, I was an Eagle Scout, and uh, and actually I, it's, uh, I consider it a great accomplishment. And, uh, and uh, me and the, and the kid next door to me, uh, we both lived out uh, out, in the, out of town on some acreage, but we had a competition uh, to see how fast we could get it. And we both got it when we were 14, and um, and uh, a lot of it had to do with good people around us, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that we had a healthy little competition, and we got it on the same court of honor uh, at the same time. But. Uh, uh, and then uh, camping, there was a lot of camping. In Wyoming, you could camp anywhere. Uh, uh, probably just uh, being together with all the guys and then uh, pine cone wars. We'd split up and have pine cone wars, and, and that was always a great deal. And then the other, uh, once a year, we would take a 70-mile horseback trip. Uh, and so those were impressive. And then uh, uh, the 50-mile hikes where you spend a week out there, all those things were great. Pinecone Wars, you got any uh, any good scars you can tell us about? No, nah, they tend to heal up. That's not to mean somebody's not going to get scuffed up or upset or uh, feel like uh, he was mishandled on the subject. But, uh, you know, you persevere, and it's all uh, part of go uh, growing up uh, in uh, Wyoming. And, uh, and if you... Uh, you know, if a pine cone war breaks out, you don't really have any choice but to engage in it. I mean, there's not, there's no neutral countries in pine cone wars. Thomas in San Antonio asks, do you like having open weeks or would you rather play straight through? Um, I think uh, some well-placed open weeks are good. Uh, you know, we're uh, one of the very few teams in America. Talked to a couple coaches today, and they were shocked to hear that we had not had an open week around here since 2004. And because uh, most uh, teams have one or two open weeks, so I, I think they're good and you know ideal and a part of uh, scheduling that uh, definitely needs to be considered. And so, but you got to maximize it. You got to use your time and you got to keep your focus. So it, it presents some different challenges, but I think. Uh, uh, if utilized right, can be very good for a team. Jackson in Missouri City asks, what have you disliked about the offense this year? Well, just the same thing everybody fights is consistency. There isn't a, a team in the country or a unit in the country that's uh, not trying to improve consistency. Uh, we need to be consistent, be a team that's uh, patient enough to make routine plays and just take a lot of pride in making routine plays. Perry in Lubbock wants to know, is the new clock rule good or bad for college football? I think it's pretty good. I think it forces teams to have better tempo. It, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't allow teams to slow games down, and, uh, you know, they get over sooner, which I don't know if that's beneficial or not. Uh, maybe they ought to have the clock rule and add more time. I don't know, but, you know, it's not like anybody's really losing plays, I don't think, so uh, I've thought it's fine. Red Raider football with Mike Leach is presented to you by First United Bank. Have you back with us here on Red Raider football with Mike Leach. A beautiful night here at Jones AT&T Stadium, University of Massachusetts in town, taking on your Red Raiders, and this is what happened. 
We pick up the opening drive of the game with Tech at the UMass 45, the gift to Shannon Woods, and with some help from the O-line, he finds daylight for the 20-yard pickup, the senior averaging 11 yards a carry against the Minutemen. On the night, the offense going 5 of 11 on third down, still on the opening drive, a third and 19. Graham Harrell spots a wide-open Baron Batch, and the sophomore moves the chains and picks up 19 of his 123 all-purpose yards. The Red Raiders cap the nine-play drive on first and goal. Woods on the carry, and the line opens up the left side for the two-yard plunge to put Texas Tech on the board, the senior's fifth rushing TD of 2008. Following a UMass punt, Tech driving a second and five from their 42. Harrell with the pump fake and screen pass to Batch, and the Red Baron turns it up the sideline behind some nice downfield blocking. The Scampers 26 yards, the Minutemen 32. Batch with 68 yards on five receptions. On the fourth play of the 63-yard drive, the play-action pass from Harrell to Tremaine Swindle at the seven, and the freshman finds pay dirt for the first touchdown of his career, a 17-yard scoring strike as the Red Raiders would take a 14-0 lead. Late in the first, the air raid strikes on third and three from the 12. Harold Eric Morris on the slant at the eight, and the elf gets around the edge and into the end zone with a jaunty step for his first of two touchdowns on the night as Texas Tech goes up 21-7. Second quarter now, the second and two give to Woods, racing around the outside before cutting back and galloping in for the score. The senior would finish the game matching a personal best with three scores on the ground, but for sixth place on the school career scoring list, and running for 108 of the Red Raiders' 100. 79 rushing yards. In the third quarter, the stingy swarm defense picking up their 10th INT of 08. Senior captain Darcel McBath with the pick six on the 45-yard return as the number nine Red Raiders improved to 4-0 on the year. 56-14 is your Saturday night final from Jones AT&T Stadium. Red Raider football with Mike Leach is presented to you by First United Bank. Need a job? Looking for work? JobSpotOnline.com, the spot for jobs. Lubbock County Office of Elections needs election workers. If you can work all day Election Day, Tuesday, November 4th, and have the time to devote one day to training in October, go by Express Employment with two forms of ID between eight and four weekdays. Express Employment is located at 81st and Boston. Training pay is $8 per hour. And on Election Day, it's $10 per hour. JobSpotOnline.com, the spot for jobs. It's so big. We're making the great 12 event three days. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, pay no interest and make no payments for 12 months. Plus, take an additional 12% off our already low Ashley Direct prices. Huge savings throughout our showroom. Plus, an extra 12% off. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, save an additional 12%. Plus, pay no interest and make no payments for 12 months. But hurry, it's only three days. This weekend only at your Ashley Furniture Home Store in Amarillo, Lubbock, and Midland. Welcome back to the show. After the final non-conference game of the season was wrapped up here at Jones AT&T Stadium, we talked all about it with the head coach. All right, coach, congratulations on the win over University of Massachusetts. You get to go into a bye week now. What, uh, from this game, from this win, what made you happiest out of everything you saw? I thought we played together on all three sides of the ball. I thought uh, defensively we really did a good job, and our first defense uh, shut them out because uh, the, the, you know, the one uh, score was from a fumble and uh, that we had on offense but our first defense shut them out second defense i was disappointed they let them score and then uh but i felt like uh, our first group really played well and then uh uh first offense i thought graham did a great job uh guiding our offense and overcoming adversity and just making a series of routine plays over and over and over and then special teams i think we remain pretty explosive but uh you know uh I uh, need to be a little better on the penalties. I think we've improved on it. And defensively, I didn't think we had hardly any. Uh, but offensively and, sp and special teams, I think we could be a little sharper. From this week to last, what uh, was any, there anything specific that you guys did with Harold said to Harold, or was it just a matter, like you said, of making those routine plays or a combo of both? Or what changed from, from the start of the season to now? Well, I think the biggest thing is you... You know, he's a ridiculously highly motivated person, always trying to find the edge, improve, and get a little extra. And sometimes, uh, you know, you just need to do the same thing over and over. And I think as an offense, uh, you know, we've settled in and uh, we're real disciplined this game about doing uh, same, the same basic things over and over. And I thought our pad level on both sides of the ball was better this game. 
Eric Morris does some nice things as well. Another two touchdowns for the Elf. Pretty uh, ho-hum night becoming for, uh, for Eric Morris, isn't it? Yeah, I thought he did some good things. Uh, came close to breaking some punts. Wished, uh, wished he would have. Uh, did a good job of scoring the touchdowns. And uh, good competitive player. Just kind of uh, one of those uh, guys that's steady that uh, always keeps you in business. Is this the best as far as uh, punt returning that you've had since, uh, since the Welker years? I would say it's pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's brought one back and I think continues to improve and that unit continues to improve. So, uh, you know, we, we need to obviously uh, keep getting better at it. But uh, I think he's a good guy back there to catch it. And then in the backfield, a great performance by Shannon Woods and Baron Batch. You talked at length about uh, their combined production and, and just all-purpose yards. Yeah, I thought both played real well. I think they complement each other well. I think uh, they're each uh, beginning to feature each other's uh, uh, best qualities, you know, kind of learning from one another. And I think uh, they, they're, they're just a great combo. And I think uh, they're, they're uh, both getting a lot of production out of the position. For different reasons last year, they were both on the scout team, and they said, hey, it both motivated us, and, and we're really feeding off it. How's that, uh, how does that make you feel when you hear something like that? Well, I think it's good. It means they weren't wasting their time, and it uh, means that they got the most out of it. And without being uh, competitive and conscious of what uh, you're trying to do and, and, and improving, uh, you're really not going to become a very good player. Have you ever had a combo of backs that, that's run with this power? I know it's early, you know, it's September, but they've really seemed to run with, with a kind of a controlled violence. Uh, maybe not quite the power, not quite the violence, but I thought uh, Johnny Mack and Torian uh, really complemented each other well. On the flip side of the ball, the ones do another good job. They, they for all intents and purposes, the ones on defense pitch a shutout. Coming into the season, everyone knows what the offense is capable of. A lot of talk about the defense and what they might do. S thus far, have they lived up to what you've expected? I don't know if there's any living up, but there's doing good things and then improving on it. And I think they have done good things and continue to improve on it. How happy with the front seven's performance and pressure on the quarterback were you tonight? I thought they did real good. That quarterback is a real talented quarterback that they have. And, uh, and uh, they did a good job stopping uh, a running back that I consider really good. And uh, we didn't get to see how good that quarterback is because we were in his lap all night. And I think that's a real credit to our defensive line. And then also uh, our offensive line, I thought, did a great job uh, setting the tempo and responding to all the different looks that uh, they give us. Red Raider football with Mike Leach is presented to you by First United Bank. At First United Bank, our mission has always been the same, to build enduring relationships with our customers and to support the West Texas communities we serve. For over a hundred years, our roots have been planted right here, and our focus for the future is you. With new, innovative products to help you bank smart, with sound financial advice to help you live well, and with friendly personal service to help you enjoy the ride. First United Bank, celebrating 100 years of service to West Texas. Lubbock, Texas, a city built on a strong foundation of family values and honest hard work. The McDougal family of companies are no different. Offering quality living for the Lubbock community for more than 25 years, McDougal offers 16 apartment communities to choose from. Ready for a new home? Let one of our 30 top producing real estate agents help. Need to expand your business? Contact McDougal Commercial Real Estate Services. McDougal Companies, making your dreams come true. Hey, Gary. What are you doing out here? We got you a new place to work. Come on, let me show you. Pioneer, the name you trust for low miles, low prices, and low payments is under construction at their new location. Stay tuned for our grand opening coming soon. Up, we'll get the flagpole put up. We're get the flagpole put up. We're a new building. Gary? Gary? Roy, you want to go to lunch? Pioneer used cars, now open at 82nd in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah Richard, lunch? I'm in a hole. This is Ag Day. Weekdays at 6 a.m. on Fox 34.
Security means never having to worry about where you're going to get the next rent check. Security is knowing that you have a plan, a net to catch you. Security is knowing you have the right training in the right field. Computer Career Center can get you there. We're filling up classes right now for medical assistance and medical information specialists. The fields are in high demand, and our training will allow you to make your own way on your terms. Call 785-2100 or catch us on the web at computercareercenter.com. You've got a great future with us. So happy you're back with us here on Red Raider Football with Mike Leach. And one more time, here's the head coach. How fair, how unfair is it to say that a you know, few guys on defense have consistently and quietly just produced over the last few years as Darcel McBath has? He had a big night tonight, big hit, you know, an interception for a touchdown, did, did some nice things. Well, Darcel's developed into a captain and kind of a leader, which, uh, you know, besides just his talents, uh, is, uh, you know, a, a kind of a key figure to get the most out of the other guys out there. You pleased with, uh, I guess, on the whole special teams play? Uh, yeah, we're still a little inconsistent. You know, I think that uh, I felt like we should have punted better. Uh, penalties, we've got to control that. Uh, you know, we, we've got a lot of firepower. We're explosive. We do some good things, but, uh, you know, just need to continue to improve on it. Was Adam James a guy that's kind of steadily emerging for you? It looked like he did some pretty good things tonight. Adam probably had the catch of the night. It was really an impressive catch. and. Uh, a little bit of a late throw, perhaps, by Graham, but a great catch by Adam. Pretty cool the dimension that he brings the offense. He's, he just seems like a different type of player for you guys. Well, he's got great hands, and then he's uh, real physical. He's one of the few receivers we have that's uh, bigger and stronger than most of the, the people that cover him. Does dad talk uh, much with you? You heard from Craig James much? I have before. What an impressive player he was. And, uh, yeah, it'd be nice to have a father-son combo out here. So, uh so maybe we can get Craig in the backfield and uh, and Junior there at the receiver position and see what uh, what kind of magic they can make, you know. Coach, with four games under your belt, anything surprised you this this season out of your team that you've seen? Uh, you know, I just it's hard to say surprises just because you know that there's going to be a variety of things to work on. You know that you're going to kind of grow and come together as a team. Uh, you don't always know how that's going to manifest itself, and then you just respond and adjust to it. But the thing is, is I think that uh, that our team uh, is very coachable. I think, uh, you know, the majority are very committed to uh, doing well, and so I think it, that helps you improve at a good pace. Finally, what would you think of that kick that the uh, student made in, in the uh, intermission there? It was a heck of a kick. Uh, if all his material checks out, we may have him walk on and see if uh, he wants to come kick for the Red Raiders, help us out with drills, and uh, who knows, uh, maybe uh, someday emerge uh, just like uh, Treese and Trelika did, and, uh, and who knows what the future may hold. Congrats on the win, Coach. Have a good week off, and we'll see you at Kansas State. All right, well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Red Raider football with Mike Leach is presented to you by First United Bank. At First United Bank, our mission has always been the same, to build enduring relationships with our customers and to support the West Texas communities we serve. For over 100 years, our roots have been planted right here, and our focus for the future is you. With new, innovative products to help you bank smart, with sound financial advice to help you live well, and with friendly personal service to help you enjoy the ride. First United Bank, celebrating 100 years of service to West Texas. Big plays. 25-20, forget it. Touchdown, Red Raiders. Big games. <laughs> Big time. Harold throwing right side, end zone open is Crabtree. Touchdown, Red Raiders. Get your tickets today and see the Red Raiders take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers on Saturday, October 11th. Welcome back to Red Raider Football with Mike Leach. And before we get going, we want to take a look at a playmaker from shallow water, Texas. We're talking, of course, about Eric Morris.
elf. The elf. I don't know. I don't even know who Eric Morris is. He's the elf. Senior Eric Morris, the player known as the elf, has seen his role in the air raid attack grow each year. From averaging nearly 14 yards per catch as a sophomore in 2006 to 75 receptions during his junior campaign in which he scored at least one touchdown in each of the final four games. With sure hands and a magical ability in space, the shallow water product is a potent weapon in the air raid arsenal. He brings a toughness and uh, just a dependability, um, just that factor that, that we don't have with all the other positions right now. You know he's going to be in the right spot. You know he's going to be there at practice every day, similar to what Danny brought us last year. Just that guy that everybody can look at, all these young, talented guys that we have, and uh, receiver-wise, we have a lot of them. Uh, that, that's a guy they need to look to because if they can be as consistent and dependable as Eric is, uh, then they're going to all be really great players. But, you know, he's made a lot of big plays for us this year, and, uh, you know, he's going to continue to do that, and he's a guy Graham really depends on in, in big situations. And and so um, he, he brings a lot to us, and not only the stats, but just the leadership and the toughness that he brings to the group uh, is probably the best thing about him. This season, with full-time punt return duties added to his plate, the Elf came up big on the road against Nevada with a momentum-building 86-yard return for a score. I first got real excited when he broke through the broke through the line. I thought he made a good cut, and then, uh, you know, I, I was sitting there, I was like, first of all, I just hope he didn't get caught. And then once I figured out he wasn't going to get caught, I just made sure there were no flags in the field. But I was excited for him, made a heck of a play for us. He's fearless. You know, he, he never wants to fair catch the ball. He wants to make a play every chance he gets. And, uh, you know, as far as his career, he really does a great job of catching the ball and making the first guy miss. And if you can make the first guy miss, then you got a chance to make a play in the open field. And he's good. Like I said, he's obviously good in the open field running. Congratulations to Texas Tech safety Daniel Charbonnet. The senior was named the Big 12 Conference Defensive Player of the Week for his efforts in last week's 43-7 victory over SMU. The Woodlands, Texas native set a school record with three interceptions in the game. Charbonnet leads the country with four interceptions on the season and has helped propel Texas Tech to the national lead with nine interceptions this season, one short of last year's total of ten. Additional congratulations go to Texas Tech receiver Michael Crabtree. The 2007 AT&T All-America Player of the Year picked up his first All-American of the Week award of the season for his performance in the Red Raiders' 43-7 win over SMU. The sophomore registered the 13th game of his career with more than 100 yards receiving. He also notched his sixth three-touchdown game, the first of 2008. He finished with 164 yards on eight catches and leads the Big 12 in yards per game. In December, four finalists for the AT&T All-America Player of the Year Award will be announced. Fans will then get a chance to say who the best player in the nation is by voting for the AT&T All-America Player of the Year. Last year, Michael Crabtree received the honor following his electrifying freshman campaign, edging out Heisman winner Tim Tebow of Florida. That's going to do it for this week's show. We really do appreciate you watching. We want you to check us out again next time as well. If you want to come catch a game here at Jones AT&T Stadium, just dial 742-TECH, 888-GO-BIG-12, or stop by a select-a-seat location or any United supermarket. You can also go to texastech.com. And, hey, while you're there, send in those questions for Ask Coach Leach. And also, check out the Red Raider replay. It's a great look at Texas Tech football. And for more information on that, just call Andrea Starch of the Red Raider Club at 742-1196. For the good guys who put this show together, for head coach Mike Leach, I'm Drew Doherty. We'll see you next time. This has been Red Raider Football with Mike Leach, produced by Texas Tech Athletics. Now, Jared Edwards with your Fox 34 Sports Overtime. I like the fact that they're not worried about who we play in, but it's how we play. And I think that's the mentality we got to make sure we keep and carry on. It's not who we play, it's just how we play. And worry about Texas Tech and making sure we do doing their job uh, at a high level. So I'm proud of the boys and, and, and how they work. Welcome back. Your Red Raider football team is 4-0, and the defense is a big reason why. 30th in the nation in scoring defense, but third nationally on third down. However, with that said, the story of the non-conference season has been the Red Raider running backs, and they impressed again last night. Shannon Woods and Baron Batch produced 284 all-purpose yards. With more on those two fellas, here's Drew Doherty. Thanks a lot, Jared. On a night when Baron Batch and Shannon Woods combined to do so much damage to the University of Massachusetts, it was especially rewarding considering where they were this time last year, both on the scout team. See, Baron was hurt at the time, and he, he red-shirted, so, 
you know, he was over there on the scout team, you know, helping our defense get better. And then and not soon after, I, I was over there with him. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, being over there, you, you don't have much to motivate yourself on other than helping the team. But at the same time, you know, you're, you're going through it too. So, you know, I mean, him both know we, we you know, we, we work hard. <laughs> I mean, that's all I can say about it. We work hard and, uh, you know, with him being hurt, he's hungry. And with me going through what I went through, I'm hungry. Well, Leach is sending in more run checks uh, than he has in the past. You know, usually it'll be two uh, pass plays that he can choose from. But, you know, they usually net, the past few games has been a run just about every time in there to check from. It. Well, see, me and Graham, you know, we're, we're the same year, so I can kind of talk him into a run here and there. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll try to make sure our voice, our voice, I'll be screaming. You know, and don't get it. I mean, he'll ignore me. He'll ignore me too. But, I mean, whenever there's a, a pass, we normally send like two plays in, so sometimes he'll have a run as the other play, and you know I'm definitely whispering. <laughs> not, not even whispering, I'm screaming it to him to run it. So I mean he'll check it occasionally. And their head coach Mike Leach impressed as well. I thought they both played real well, and I think they complement each other real well because they have a certain uh, you know it's like they literally compete for yards uh, on the ground and in the air, and. Uh, you know, and I think uh, they both have a certain number of strengths, which, you know, you can kind of tell they're observing one another and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, bringing the, the best of the other to their game, you know. With him giving us the opportunities, we got to make sure that we, you know, um, succeed in whatever it is that he gave us the opportunity at. That's, that's another reason why he's been, I guess, giving us so many chances on the ground. We better not disappoint. I think it was like we averaged like 60 yards on the ground last year. So like dead last or something, you know, coach always brings that up. And, uh, you know, it's got to be, you know, close to 140 now, close to it. Uh, and then not to count the, the touches we get through the air that we've, that we've been contributing. So, um, you know, the offensive line is, is doing a, a great job. They've put in the work, and uh, we just pride ourselves in, in, like Shannon said, just being nasty and being tough and, and getting those yards when we need to get them. Now it's a week off before the Red Raiders travel to Manhattan, Kansas, to take on Kansas State in week number one of conference play. From Jones AT&T Stadium, Drew Doherty, Fox 34 Sports. Welcome back to the show for just the third time in nine years for Mike Leach here at Texas Tech. His team has started a season 4-0. The Red Raiders will get a week off to rest and get healthy as Big 12 play starts in two weeks. With more now on Texas Tech's win over UMass, here are the Tech Talk boys, Robert Giovanetti and Chris Lowe. All right, the Red Raiders beat UMass 56-14 in non-conference at 4-0. and And you know I'm going to ask you, do we know anything about this team? I do think you know a little bit. Uh, I think that they have improved uh, steadily each week. I think that the defensively I've been very impressed with this football team. I think that the way you are running the football right now, you're feeling pretty good about your two running backs. I mean, two running backs tonight combined for nearly 300 yards of offense. I mean, that's not something that they're used to around here. And uh, I think what's interesting is that Mike is calling that and that Graham is checking to it and all those things because in, in years past, they don't either have confidence in it or they refuse to call it or whatever. But Baron Batch and, and Shannon Woods are giving you a nice tandem. And, and Ruffin Manil's defense, I think, is you know is played very consistent. Hey, uh, let's go back to Graham real quick because uh, he gets kind of called out last week, but pretty sharp uh, against UMass. I think so. I think it was a, it was a business-like performance. I think that it wasn't uh, Graham's best game, but I think it was, you know, he was very efficient. I think that he did what he needed to do, and that's why he spent most of the fourth quarter, almost all the fourth quarter, actually with his helmet off, cheering on Taylor Potts. I give up 14 points, but the defense only gives up seven, really, because seven come on a fumble return. Again, you mentioned it earlier, Russ got to be pretty happy about just how steady his defense has been. Yeah, you know, and the touchdown that the defense does give up is the second-team defense, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, Ruffin McNeil, you know, the, here's the stat. I mean, look at their third down conversions that they have allowed in the four non-conference games. They've only allowed 12 of 54 fourth down, I mean, excuse me, third down conversions. I mean, that is, I don't care if you're playing against air. You know, we talk about that in practice, but that's just a remarkable stat. They're continuing to make plays. They, they pick up, uh, you know, Darcy McBath picks off uh, the quarterback tonight, takes it back to the, you know, for seven points. So they are, you know, they may have given up a touchdown, but they scored one too. So uh, they're, they're continuing to make plays. You know, Mike Lynch frustrated I think with the with some of the second team guys on defense and on offense, but other than that, it's hard to find a lot of fault uh, with the, with the performance tonight. 56-14, Red Raiders beat UMass again. Off week next week before opening conference play in Manhattan against Kansas State.